Okay, hello everybody. I'm Julia. Um, firstly, I'm a mummy to a lovely six-year-old girl. And secondly, and this is the biggest part of who I am, is I'm a midwife. I don't practice clinically anymore, but that, that never leaves you. I'm still a midwife um, in what I do. Um, I've got a hard job now. Um, I don't know how I'm quite going to follow um, all of the experiences that we've heard about today. Um, um, but I will, with a little bit of positivity that I hope. So let's think about those stories. And let's think about Henry, Holly, um, Aidan and Grace. Um, let's think hopefully about the acorns that you've got in your pocket. I hope everybody's got one. And um, the pine cone even. And um, think about what we can do um, to make things better. Um, there's no bigger um, thing to influence us and, and give us positivity, um, then think about what, what a difference we can make. And if we can avoid having to hear another story like we've heard today, then, then surely all for the better. So this is a little bit boring, but it's probably quite important to know where the care bundle sits in the, um, in the kind of national policy um, climate. So you might have all heard of the document Better Births. Hands up if you've heard of Better Births. Hands keep up. If you've read Better Births, keep your hand up. <laughs> okay, not bad, not bad. So there's a work stream in Better Births. Um, that's the safety work stream. Um, and the care bundle sits um, quite nicely within that. And that's a really, really helpful thing because what we've heard about um, over the course of today is that there's not enough, anywhere near enough attention paid, on, paid to stillbirth. And that being part of the transformation programme means that Simon Stevens, the chief executive of NHS England, is very interested in what's happening in and around stillbirth. And the Secretary of State is also extremely interested in what's happening around stillbirth. And that's an unprecedented situation that we're in. So we've got a real opportunity to, to make a change. Um, and as Cheryl mentioned, there's also an, an all-party um, parliamentary group on baby loss. That's fantastic. So there's, there's, a, there's a huge forum um, to hear about stillbirth now. So we have to make sure that in days like today that we keep shouting really loudly um, about stillbirth. But not just about the experience, um, but what we're going to do about it. Um, what can we do? Um, so we can see from this little um, graph here, we can't make too many infer inferences from it, but we can see that the Secretary of State's target to um, reduce stillbirth is a little bit of a challenge for us. So the red line at the bottom um, is um, the target that we need to reduce stillbirth by 50% by 2030, and the blue line is where we're currently sitting. So what... If, assuming that stillbirths reduce in a linear trend, we're not, we're not on track just yet to meet that target. There's lots of things happening nationally to try and, to try and support everybody to meet that target. So part of the safety work stream, as well as the care bundle, is having a champion for maternity services, um, a safety champion, on, on boards. So that there's somebody at the very top level in all of the hospital trusts that's really interested in stillbirths um, and all the associated metrics that go with that. Um, those boards, we're really going to support them and push them to make sure that... Um, that as well as just looking at information, they're really using that in a way that, that means that services will be improved. So looking at information isn't going to change anything, but really putting that in a quality improvement cycle is what we need to do um, to make a difference and, um, to, to, to stillbirth rates. Um, it's also going to be a rapid resolution and redress scheme, which is really important. Um, and the other really important thing is a perinatal um, mortality review tool. Um, so that's a, a national standard will be set. So that means whenever there's um, um, a, a life lost, it's looked at and analysed in a way that's the same across all trusts. And that's a really, really high quality. So the maximum amount of learning can be gained from that. So we've heard a little bit um, about data. I, I won't say too much about that, um, it, other than to say we've, we've got a bit of work to do. Midwives work really, really hard in this country. Obstetricians work really, really hard in this country. But there are, we have a challenge in some of our systems. That means that we're not as good as our neighbouring high-income countries. Um, um, 
The positive in there is that where there's variation, so from region to region within England, where there's variation in stillbirth rates, that means we've got an opportunity. If other places are doing better, we need to look to them and see what they're doing and learn from them um, and do better. We can't, we can't tie this up in um, it, it will just be, we can't avoid it. That's not true of stillbirth, and nor is it true that it's just poverty, ethnicity or age. They're really, really important, but we can't hang it up on that either. There are things that we can do as clinicians um, to make sure that we um, um, reduce the stillbirth rate. <coughs> so the care bundle, what is it? Um, so, ooh, I'm a whole lot louder now. I wasn't loud before. <laughs> um, um, is a collection um, of elements of care that are pulled together in a cohesive way. This was developed because there were a bunch of individuals, um, so service users, um, clinicians, policy makers, commissioners, charity representatives who were just really quite fed up about the lack of progress that was being made with stillbirth and said, we've got to do something. They recognised that there wasn't perfect evidence. There are some NICE guidelines, there are some meta-analyses, there are some RCTs, there are some case control studies, and in some, in some instances there's nothing other than experiences, focus group work, and and um, best practice um, from a personal perspective. Um, but, you know, we can't wait for perfect evidence because as, as the infant trial shows us, um, it doesn't always make a difference and always guide our practice. So we have to do something. So, so these, this group of people got together and just, um, had a good old think, a good old look at them, a wide range of information um, uh, right from the, the top um, to the kind of um, least valued part of the scale um, and, and came up with a solution. And this solution um, is in four elements. So the first element, and you'll all know the composite parts of the care bundle, but might not have necessarily pulled them together in a whole. So the first one is reducing smoking in pregnancy. So smoking in pregnancy is, is, is possibly the easiest win there is for stillbirth. It, it has such a detrimental effect, and there's, a, there's the most guidance um, and evidence around this element as well. There's, there's a nice guideline on this that's really well evidenced. Um, so reducing smoking in pregnancy. Risk assessment and surveillance of fetal um, growth restriction. Raise an awareness of reduced fetal movement and effective fetal monitoring um, during labour. Um, not coincidentally, um, all, all of these align with the findings of, um, of the EMBRACE studies um, and the ones that predated that, says DC make um, in their previous um, iterations. So element one is around carbon monoxide testing of all pregnant women at booking um, and referral to us um, um, an opt-out, um, a stop smoking service um, um, on an opt-out, not an opt-in basis, which is, which is a really crucial difference. Um, some of the intelligence that... Um, that we get back from um, the work that we do in talking to trusts is that, that this isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. So booking visits are, 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 are really difficult. There's not a lot of time to get a lot, across a lot of information. Midwives are really worried about the impact that it has on um, their relationship with women. If they say, essentially, we don't believe what you're telling us that, about what your smoking rates. We want you to blow into this monitor so we can validate your truth, which, which I understand. Um, and access to equipment um, is, can be a challenge. So not everywhere has has a carbon monoxide monitor. Not everywhere has a stop smoking service. Um, so understanding these, the, the, the minutiae of implementing the bundle is absolutely um, crucial. And the way that we collect some of this information is through the care bundle survey. And I'll, I'll say a bit more about, about that a bit later. So element two, um, I, I know that you will have all come across the challenges um, um, of element two. Um, and growth restriction, and the biggest challenges within that are sonography capacity and the effect of induction of labour. Um, but what we have to think about is um, um, if, if we don't do these things, what are we going to do? Are we not, do we not want to pick up, detect the small babies? Once we detect the small babies, what are we going to do with them? We can't leave them. We have to do something with them. So, um, again, this, the, the survey gives us a lot of really useful information to understand the challenges um, and, and the solutions that some trusts are using to, 
to um, overcome overcome the, the challenges that they're experiencing with the care bundle. Um, element three um, is around um, reduced fetal movement and raising awareness of that. Um, and, and I think all midwives, student midwives in here will know that this this, this is a no-brainer. We've, we've known this for, for, for years and years and years and that, um, that, um, that babies change their movement um, um, if they're struggling. Um, and we need to make women more aware of that. Um, so element four is around effective fetal monitoring during labour. So that's about um, um, staff being adequately trained um, and using a buddy system um, when they're um, using um, CTGs um, in labour for high-risk women. Um, so that's a whistle-stop tour of the elements. Um, the, the care bundle is, is out there um, for everyone to look at. You can access that on the NHS England website. And as well as um, having the kind of clinical um, um, interventions that come within the care bundle, there's also a whole host of process measures um, that go with that. So that's about looking at um, what the impact is of the changes that you're making in your practice. And that's really, really important. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the survey, I said we'd, we'd move on to that. So um, once every four months, NHS England sends out um, an information update, um, an update on the evaluation of the care bundle, and I'll, I'll go on to that, um, as well as previous survey results for each trust and a request for current um, implementation levels um, of the care bundle survey. So when we started um, the care bundle, um, you can imagine that not many trusts were implementing it. And what we're seeing is a steady increase in the rate of amount of trusts that are implementing the bundle across the different elements. The survey is really, really important. So there'll be someone in each trust who has the responsibility for filling in this survey. And this is your opportunity to talk about the challenges that, that you might face in implementing the various aspects of the bundle. So that's really, really important. So the information that goes into the survey lets us know what we need to do to make it easier to implement the care bundle so it's not just a paper exercise we really need to know what's happening and what the challenges are and then we can pull all of that information together and think about what a pragmatic solution is um, to make it a bit easier for trusts to 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 cope with the increased induction rates to cope with the scanning capacity and there are some really really um, marvelous examples out there of, um, of how that can be done and that leads us quite nicely onto the stillbirth information hub. So when we launched the, um, the Saving Babies Lives Care Bundle, um, what we had intended to do was follow up relatively quickly with a toolkit. Um, and I always cringe a bit at the word toolkit um, because it's not massively helpful to have a, a, a group of uh, papers that sit on a shelf and are probably useful for a couple of months but then have no sustainability of use after that. So we really listened to the midwives at our events and we talked to improvement experts and, um, and health psychologists and thought about what we could actually do that would have um, um, an impact. And we thought that that was really creating a community of practice that would bring everyone um, together to talk about how you can make things better, not just around the care bundle, actually, but just for stillbirth um, reduction as a whole. Um, and so the idea is to give updates, to share best practice and information, and just to be able to, to enable someone sitting in a trust thinking, I'm really motivated, I want to do something something about stillbirth oh my god where do I start well actually they can start the hub because they'll be able to go there and they'll get all the data they'll get the guidelines they'll get the support from other trusts who were doing something fantastic and um, and we all know that peer-to-peer -peer support is the most effective way to make a change so that's really really the most crucial element of the hub is by bringing all everybody together not just clinicians but policymakers, commissioners charities everyone who's got something to say um, about stillbirth into one place to facilitate that that discussion and growth <coughs> that will be shared really shortly it's under development it's a very technical job I don't do the technical parts of it far too much of a challenge for me um, but somebody very clever can do all of that and is doing all of that so there'll be something for everyone to see visibly um, hopefully around about March time so watch out for it um, make sure you register yourself with it if you've got an NHS email you'll be able to use it um, and talk just talk to each other and sh share your ideas and experiences so the evaluation um, is really, really important to us. Of course, when we implement a policy, what we need to make sure is that it works um, and what impact it has um, on, on 
on outcomes as, as well as services and, and, and practice. So we're lucky enough to have um, Alex heading up, Alex Hazel heading up our um, um, care bundle evaluation. Um, there are 20 sites across the country who are um, piloting um, the care bundle. Um, lots of other trusts are implementing it. It's available to be implemented for everybody. But in order to understand exactly how it works and where it works um, and what the conditions to support that are, then the, the evaluation is key to that. Um, and yeah, the, the phase two of that is just being launched, so that's the data collection phase. So hopefully by autumn sometime, we'll have a really interesting evaluation that lets us understand um, um, the impact um, that the care bundle has on services and on outcomes. So watch this space. There will be regular updates for that um, um, as well in the care bundle hub and in the survey that goes out to trusts. <coughs> Excuse me. This is just a wee little bit of a slide. Um, I, won't, I won't talk too much about that, but you can see um, from that, so in the light and the teal colour, we can see that um, that's the percentage of trusts across the country who are carrying out improvement activities associated with the care bundle. So they're doing something. They might not be doing everything that they need for each element of the care bundle, so they might um, not be able to do carbon monoxide monitoring because they haven't got um, um, carbon monoxide monitors, but they might actually be referring to stop smoking services based on what the woman tells them. So um, you don't have to implement the care bundle wholesale, you can do that in a stepwise fashion where your systems and um, capacity um, allows. Um, so, so the trust in Teal are implementing um, improvement activities and um, the trust in uh, the, the number in blue is where they're doing it at 100%. So you can see there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a difference between that and, and, and that's expectedly so. Um, the trickiest elements seem to be element two and three and I, and I guess that's no surprise because they're, they're the two elements that come with um, the need for extra scanning. Um, so so they're, they're harder to implement. So I guess what's really important is, is to talk about um, what you can do. And there's, there's this really important concept of not, not letting perfection be in the enemy of progress. So we don't, we don't have all the answers um, at all, but what we do have is a really, really well-considered solution. Um, so we need to crack on with that, really. So each and every one of you in here can, can push that in your trust. Um, absolutely. You can ask who the care bundle lead is. You can ask to see the policy on um, reduced fetal movements. You can um, ask to see the, the care bundle survey information and make sure it's visible. So ask questions, push, um, and really try hard to understand what's happening in your trust to pull the care bundle together. Um, don't be afraid of getting it wrong. Um, so this is this is really crucial as well. You've, you've just got to try um, and do something. So our, our, the most fantastic example we've got is, is a midwife um, in Taunton, and she she when she presents and she does so fantastically. She starts by saying, "I didn't have a clue what I was doing in the beginning, but you know what? We tried, and they've made fantastic progress because she'll try. She makes a mistake, gets everyone together, talks about it, figures out how to move forward, and then they keep trying." and they keep pushing and, and that's what it takes to make a difference is to not be afraid of, afraid of getting things wrong but just have a go at something anything um, do make a difference one, one family at a time so each one person in here can make a huge difference to, to any one family be that when you pick up the call for a woman who's worried about um, her baby's movements you can say come in come in we don't need to, there's no more needed than that than just to say, come in and let's talk to you. Um, if you're the person that is looking after a woman who's got a really long trace and you're just not sure that you're seeing it in the same way, you might not have a buddy system in your trust, but you can go and ask someone to come and look at your CTG for you because you've been looking at it for a long time and you would just appreciate a bit of effort. So everyone in here can do something really, really simple that can make a difference to one person. And you know what? If you work together, imagine what a massive difference you can make to many, many, many families. And the hub, the stillbirth information hub, will be really, really crucial to that. And be a care bundle champion. Um, so if people aren't talking about the care bundle in practice, talk about it. 
um, have a conversation, say, did you know about the care bundle? What, what are we doing in our trust to talk about, um, um, to bring the care bundle together? Um, so all it takes is for one person, um, if that's a student midwife, if that's, um, if that's a healthcare assistant, if that's a ward domestic, if that's um, the obstetrician, um, it doesn't matter who, it just takes one person to keep asking questions and get that on the agenda. That's really, really powerful. The person that most influenced me um, in practice, I had my biggest light bulb moment, was, was our ward was our ward cleaner. Um, I was doing something on normality and I had absolutely no idea why the beds kept getting moved back into the middle of the room and I talked to the domestic about it and she told me and then they never got moved ever again. Brilliant. Talk to everybody. Um, um, and make a pledge. Um, uh, days like today are absolutely fantastic but what we have to make sure is that you go away from today um, with the intention of doing something and actually doing it. So just cement that. Just look. Just have a little think about the one thing that you can do in your trust, or the one thing that you can do as a student midwife or midwife. Um, think about that. Cement it by telling somebody else. If you tell somebody, you've got to do it, haven't you? Those are the rules. Um, um, and yeah, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the care bundle. It's a bit of a whistle stop. Um, happy to talk in more detail to anybody at all at any point. My email's not on there, but I'll make sure it's on there when, when the presentations are circulated. Oh, thank you.